Greetings, gentle listeners. If you enjoy this podcast, you may also like Bros A, a mirthy talk show starring four bros who sip wine and consider questions submitted by you, the audience, about current events, pop culture, and which Muppet you should get tattooed on your back. Subscribe to Bros A wherever you get your podcasts. That's B R O S E. Bros A, the podcast for those who drink rose. Person in Person is brought to you by the Perineum Group the only truly centrist news organization. That's right, Greg. We're in the sweet spot between partisan extremes. When taint the left and taint the right, it's perineum. What does the cure have to do with Zoom quilts? Help, I'm trapped in a Chinese boy band factory. So is that earthquake male or female? Give me a break, give me a break, or give me death. Can a new hairdo get you arrested for tagging? The answers to all these questions, plus sports, emotional weather, and state up, that's tonight on Person in Person. Good evening, wherever you are, whoever you are, and welcome to Person in Person. I'm Gene Person. And I'm Greg Person. No relation. Person in Person is a news show for people who don't like news shows by people who don't like news shows. And I'm happy to note that after an impassioned plea to the powers that be, Person in Person got to have our prom. I mean, it was outside of city limits, but it was a truly magical night. Yeah, a good time was had by all, except for Jerry. Yeah, Which is well, as it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into tonight's story beats. Noted dipshit Ted Nugent has officially come down with COVID, a disease he referred to on multiple occasions as a complete fabrication, a hoax. Alarming his fans, he claimed it was bad enough he thought he was going to die. Alarming everyone else, he did not actually die. (laughs) A Japanese man was arrested for simultaneously dating 35 women at once to get birthday presents year-round. The women became suspicious because he was always lugging around a duffel bag full of cell phones. <laughs> Fed up with violations of freedom of speech on private platforms of Facebook and Twitter, the MyPillow CEO has started his own social network, which will be called Frank, and has vowed that it will be a space for free speech, guaranteeing conservatives will have more followers than on other platforms. He's also announced that you will not be able to take the Lord's name in vain on his free speech social network because uh, we got to protect Frank's virgin ears. A recent poll showed that 46% of respondents would vote for Dwayne The Rock Johnson for president in 2024. We here at Person in Person are proud to endorse the people's champion. (laughs) How interesting would that be? I mean, can you think of a better wrestler for president? I can't. Well, yes, I can. Jesse Ventura, actually. Oh, okay. (laughs) There you go. Uh, Elon Musk jokingly told an interviewer that in his Mars colony, a bunch of people are going to die. That it will be uncomfortable and the food won't be very good. Or at least that's how it was reported. I think there's just the slightest chance he may be talking about the future of Earth if people like Elon Musk continue to hoard wealth. But when pressed for further clarification, he responded in the usual way by smiling, shrugging, and giving himself a huge pay raise. A Texas woman recently found that she had a warrant in Oklahoma for a VHS tape she had rented and forgot to return in 1999. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. It's actually kind of a, a funny story. She um, She's getting her uh, license renewed in, in Texas, and they wouldn't renew her license because they said she had active warrants in Oklahoma. And she's like, what the hell are you talking about? And she had rented a copy of Sabrina the Teenage Witch in 1999, Uh uh, forgot to return it. And so they put a warrant out for her arrest for embezzlement by theft of rental property. Wow. And the video store doesn't even exist anymore. The video store closed down in 2008. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. On to main news. Our top story tonight, I'm going to lead off with Zoom quilts. 
I'd like to talk about those. They're a type of digital art that can be infinitely zoomed in on. They were created by a German artist named Nicholas Baumgarten, and uh, they've been around for quite a while. But they really are kind of breathtaking. They remind me of infinite zooms on a Mandelbrot fractal without the precision of the same repeating parts quite as often. Instead, they're a delightful visual array of shapes and threads stretching into the center of the image, often involving color scheme changes and other visual contrasts as you zoom further and further in. They really do take you on a journey. They do eventually repeat, but the road to the beginning is so varied and interesting that it's not always easy to see the point where you started. As an art form, zoom quilts are mesmerizing, and I'm going to attach a couple of links to this week's show notes so you can all take a look. I do not re- recommend um, taking a look on a full stomach, though, because uh, there is a little issue with motion sickness sometimes in these images. See, that was my problem because I looked them up and I get motion sick very, very easily. And I looked at this thing for about five seconds and I was like, nope. Yeah, Can't do that. You might want to take a ginger pill or chew on a ginger chew or something before uh, before going in on this because there is a little bit of that issue. But what does that have to do with the Cure, the '80s goth rock post punk band uh, responsible for such hits as "Friday I'm in Love," "Fascination Street," and "Boys Don't Cry"? Okay, I got. An, I have an answer to this. Okay, <laughs> there are probably a dozen cure songs that i could put on my stereo right now any one of those songs on repeat forever the end true true actually yeah the cure for me the whole album of wild mood swings which such a great such a great album we've talked about this many many times um in fact that was one of the things that we bonded over very mm-hmm. early on is that we both know which is the best Cure album. It's Wild Mood Swings. Oh, yeah, definitely my favorite of their albums. Um, it's, it's just, it, I mean, it's called Wild Mood Swings, and there really is kind of a song for every emotion. It's it's a beautiful and album. What's, what's great for me is how the lyrics so often don't match the tone. Oh, it's so cool. Okay. It's so, so cool. What it what it reminds me of uh, in that way is um, some of the better Smith songs. Right, uh, right. Have that going on where it's like you have this sort of melancholy melody and the song is some girls are bigger than others. And you're like, <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> right. But uh, no, we, we both uh, love The Cure. Um, mm-hmm. I would say The Cure is definitely in my top 10 and the, the album Wild Mood Swings I have literally put on repeat and just listened to it three or four times in a row now that's not great for your brain mm-hmm. but it's there's an itch that you can only scratch with The Cure I, I, I agree to that and, and their band is appropriately named that's all I can say Amen well hell that was easy we solved that one like right away yeah De- Detective Gene is on the case Good job, man. Yeah, the game is afoot, and uh, you have cured us of the desire to know the connection between these two things. However, we've still got time to kill in this segment, so what do you want to talk about? Well, um, I'm going to make a vegan chicken fried steak tomorrow. I've got it all planned out. I've got my vegan crunchy chicken tenders. I've got my uh, country gravy with Mm -hmm. uh, oat milk. And uh, we're going to make some delicious mashed potatoes to go with. Should be a good time. Nice. I'd like to talk about Tucker Carlson. Oh, okay. That's a wild choice, but go for it. Because that fucker went on the air this week and asked. He said that his viewers should call the police on people who are wearing a mask outdoors. He also advocated for calling child protective services on parents who have their children wear a mask outdoors and i am just like yeah the bummer about tucker carlson though is that his show is if not the highest rated at the moment certainly one of the highest rated shows on tv yeah everyone wants to watch the nazi yeah i i have listened to i think three minutes is probably the longest i've ever listened to tucker carlson before tapping out because 
he'll say the quiet part loud and his audience just loves it. I wouldn't be surprised if someday that little troll, that little shit gnome, you know, ran for office himself and I don't know what happens after that. Yeah. I hate him so much. I hate him too. Um, I mean, how that how that smug little shit still has a show is kind of beyond me. Well, every you, once in a while, they have to uh, spank him and send him on vacation for a couple of weeks because, you know, yeah. he'll say something like immigrants make America dirty, which is a real thing that he has actually said. Right. And he looks like the pool of miscellaneous fluids at the doorstep of a frat party impregnated the pool of miscellaneous body fluids at another frat party and sent that kid to college as a fucking legacy. Ew, that is really gross, but totally apt. Yeah. All right. Well, I got that off my chest now. All right. Uh, well, uh, what are you up to? I understand you've also uh, gone the vegan route lately. How's that treating you? I'm definitely not uh, going the vegan route, but thanks for asking. I oh, have no, given... that's right. You're, yeah, you've given I've up give... red meat. I've given up red meat and poultry. Uh, I'm still eating fish, and this is uh, on my doctor's recommendation as it's a, a lean meat that's really high in protein and is helping me to maintain the protein levels I need as an old. And also, um, I'm consuming some animal fat through dairy products. But, um, but I am having some pretty positive reactions uh, inside my body to, uh, <laughs> to the lack of red meat, certainly. Because I used to eat kind of a lot of it, and uh, I just feel generally better. I have more energy. I feel as good as I did in my 30s, which I am in my 40s. So that is that is pretty great. Well, you know, I always uh, took with a grain of salt these these health claims, and it's not like the health claims were wild or were from disreputable sources i just didn't want to believe them when people said things like oh you know red meat's really bad for your heart health it's really mm -hmm. inflammatory and then when i stopped eating meat it was like i feel amazing oh yeah well, I could... so the inflammatory thing is incredible because like uh i have tendonitis and i have coped with tendonitis in my wrists for probably 25 years and uh there's always a baseline of pain that I am no longer feeling and didn't even realize was kind of there until it was gone. Mm -hmm. Same. I have a, a form of tendonitis that doctors refer to as wanker's wrist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's much better. Um, the, the downside, of course, is that my wanking has increased precipitously since becoming vegan. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're more likely to, uh, to, to be successful in that regard, too, with the... Uh, with a diet low in red meat, as I have come to understand it. Well, and, uh, you know, what I've noticed is, and of course I'm exercising again more because the weather's nice again. Sure. But um, my my uh, blood oxygen has gone up and my resting heart rate has gone down just in mm. the last few months. Nice. I'm, how How is your resting bitch face? Oh, <laughs> It's still it's still the same as you remember. Extremely okay. bitchy. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, we can move on now to breaking news. Let's do. Okay. So this is a this is a great story. I I love it cuz I feel like it's so emblematic of the modern era. Vladislav Ivanov is a 27-year-old Russian expat living in China who was hired to be the Mandarin tutor on a reality show to make a Chinese boy band. Uh, they had a couple of Japanese contestants who needed to learn Mandarin, and he was tutoring them. But he is a part-time model and quite easy on the eyes. Mm -hmm. So the producers of the show asked him to enter as a competitor to actually try to be on the band. So he thought, okay, that sounds like something I might try. Signs on the dotted line. The thing is, though is that this reality show to make a boy band is like a boot camp. You know, they all live in this big barracks and they're drilling and practicing and doing these challenges all the time. And almost instantly, he hates it. He wants to get off the show. But he can't quit the show 
without forfeiting a massive sum of money for breach of contract. Sure. So he just gave these listless, depressed performances and every week begged the audience to vote him off. <laughs> did they keep him around? Absolutely. <laughs> of course they did. The thing is, the sight of this miserable young man trapped in a job that he hated really resonated with the young Chinese audience, as I dare say it right. would anywhere in the world. Right. I mean, you could you could do this any any country in the world, and the young people watching it would be like, yeah, I stand that guy. I relate to that. Uh, so they kept him on all the way to the finale, and what he was really scared of is that they would actually vote for him to join the band, because then he would be contractually obligated to be in the band for, like, years. Uh-huh. And he was so, so desperate. And finally, the audience showed mercy and voted him out last to not be in the band. Oh, that's like a perfect story. Yeah, he was so relieved. Like, he literally ran off the stage and cried. <laughs> he was so happy. <laughs> I love this story. It's great. Yeah, yeah. You, should, uh, you should look it up. There's, there's a lot of articles about it because... This became a big cultural phenomenon in the pop culture of China. I, I think it's time to say bye, bye, bye to your story. I'm. Uh... <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. I want it that way. So good, good. A New Hampshire man has turned himself in after an event that triggered reports of an earthquake in New England. How did this happen? You might ask. He set off. 80 pounds of tannerite, a legal-to-purchase explosive that is often used during firearm target practice. Why did he set off 80 pounds of tannerite? What good did this explosion do? Well, I'll tell you what it was all about. Revealing the gender of a baby. That's what. While I've received a smattering of reports that the baby is a boy, we can be damn sure that baby's gender is fucking American. Because in the land of the free, your baby doesn't even have a gender unless you commit an act of domestic terrorism. In the USA, it's all about sacrifices. We demand that in the process of revealing the gender of a child, you either kill someone, set off a raging wildfire, crash a plane, trigger an earthquake, or best case scenario, all of the above. I mean, if only there were some other way of learning what genitals a baby is going to be born with. Medical science really needs to get on this. There are a lot of trends that I think are stupid. Some of them involve cutesy portmanteaus, and a lot of them stem from the Live, Laugh, Love set. Gender reveal parties are the dumbest of the bunch. Number one, you're already imposing roles on your child before it's born. Number two, you're making a big show out of information that doesn't really matter. When Gil and I were in ultrasound, we learned that little Jean was going to be a boy. What happened when I found out? I learned the information. What changed when I found out? Nothing. I've seen videos of gender reveals, and every time after the fireworks or balloons or whatever, the parents are like, huh, feels like so much squeeze for so little juice. So let's do better, guys. If you're going to blow something up, make sure that it serves a purpose, like busting myths. Or better yet, if you live in Oregon, clearing a whale carcass from a beach. Here's, here's what I do want to say about this, and I know I'm going to sound like an old when I say this, but there is a tendency in our culture to over-commemorate everything now mm -hmm. because you're going to put it on the gram. So you want to make your life a constant spectacle for other people to observe. So anything that happens, you have to blow something up. Having a baby? Blow something up. Baby's a boy or a girl? Blow something up. Baby gets into preschool, blow something up. Yeah. It's not a good trend, though. It's not. I mean, there are children now, babies, whose gender were announced who no longer have parents in some cases because of these things. That's true. I mean, let's just in general, I wish we could agree as a country that there are more explosions than we really need. Yeah. And also... Can we stop with all the fireworks on the 4th of July? You know, there are people like me who are very, very noise sensitive. 
and it's really obnoxious. Like, I'm fine with it up until about 10 o'clock at night, but then when we're getting into like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning the next day, do we really need to be celebrating independence that late? When we're getting See, into all... three nights later and there are still fireworks going off, do we really need to be doing that? Well, you know, I I like the fireworks displays. I just wish people had a little bit more common sense and a little bit more courtesy. Just because you can make a loud noise doesn't mean you have to. A two-year-old can learn it, and so can you. Yeah. Well, and it's not just people like me. There are people out there who have PTSD who are veterans. Like, Fourth of July is, is notoriously a difficult holiday for certain veterans. Oh, man, I have literally hunkered down with veterans with PTSD on Fourth of July and just been like, we'll be cool, man. It'll be cool. I'm just going to put on some music. We'll put on some TV, whatever. We'll just relax. Mm -hmm. It's not a good time. Right. All right. On that cheery note, it's sports. Sports. Okay. I want to talk about a traditional combat sport of the Bantu tribes of South Africa. That's right, fight fans. It's Nguni stick fighting. Now, the way this works is you got two sticks you got a stick that's about three foot long for hitting and a stick that's about five foot long for defending. And then, you know, two guys or a group of guys, two groups of guys will square off and whack the shit out of each other until one of them gives up or breaks a stick. And uh, in modern times, it's mostly practiced as part of traditional wedding ceremonies in rural areas. Uh, the men of the families of the bride and groom will get together and do a bit of stick fighting to get to know each other. Uh, time was, though, it was considered part of the education of a teenage boy in a rural community. Uh, the saying used to be, wherever there are cows, there is stick fighting. And uh, Nelson mm -hmm. Mandela himself actually trained in stick fighting as a young man. In an interesting bit of synchronicity, I, I just read the, uh, the book Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, who is a South African and the Bantu and their sticks do feature into that story of his, uh, of his, uh, his childhood. Really? Did, uh, did Trevor Noah learn mm -hmm. stick fighting as well? I'm not sure if he learned stick fighting. I don't remember that being in the, the overall book. His story is really interesting. He, he was able to speak a number of different languages, whereas sort of the individual sort of cliques of people would, would stay within their language or mm -hmm. dialect. And it allowed him to befriend kind of different groups of people. Yeah. I mean, languages can bring people together for sure. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, this goes to show you, though, going back to stick fighting, the actual Mandela effect is not when you remember things differently than they really happened. It's when you can't remember things correctly because you just got hit in the head with a big fucking stick. Sure. Because sure. Nelson Mandela will bring the pain. Well, not anymore, but... Jesus. I'm just saying, like, it's not... I don't think it's in bad taste to point out that a guy who's like 150 years old has passed on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough. I mean, much love to Nelson Mandela, you know. Yeah, he was an incredible human being. All right, it's the emotional weather. This week we've chosen to do dutiful, dutiful, and dude-iful. My story for dutiful, in Molokai, Maui, school librarian Diane Mokuau saw the library as more than just a study hall. She saw it as an opportunity to truly enrich her students' lives. So she turned it into a place for tutoring and activities including yoga, cooking lessons, book fairs, and uh, family nights. She added soothing music to the ambiance and welcomed in students who were intimidated by older students, promising that it was a safe place to go and that they were always welcome. As a result, she was honored by the School Library Journal as one of two 2021 School Librarians of the Year. She was awarded both a personal cash prize and a prize for her library, and she deserves all of the positive press coming her way. Great work, Diane, to both you and your team. You know, as a kid who spent a lot of time in the library, 
uh, because like my hero Chidi Anagonye, my soulmate is books. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I really think this is great because I do think that libraries alone pretty much among all public spaces have that chance to be a center of, of the community. So I think that's great. I completely agree. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. On a downer note, uh, a California judge has ruled that companies owned by Michael Jackson had no duty to protect his victims from abuse. Uh, the legal argument being that because they were owned by him, they could only be extensions of his will, but somehow have no culpability for the exercise of it. So, in summary, corporations are people, judges are wise, and the law is just. That that makes you proud to be an American, huh? Yep. I, I wish to God, like, you know, a lot of times I say that my mistake was in not being born rich, but now I think my mistake was in not being born a corporation. Right. Those people have it made. Man, that's that sounds like more of a dutiful story to me in a way, but I'm, I mean, we went pretty scatological in our, our dutiful In London, uh, Britain is slowly opening back up after a third nationwide lockdown, but while shops, gyms, cafes, and parks are open, and groups of up to six are a common sight, public bathrooms haven't so much to open back up, which is leading to another common sight. And by sight, I mean smell. That's right, the supposedly sophisticated original that spun off into the USA has citizens defecating in the streets particularly in local bushes or wooded areas. Poop is becoming an increasing problem, and some are calling it a second significant public health risk. The issue of sanitation is putting a strain on an infrastructure that has already spread a little too thin, and the conditions are so bad, they're causing Britain to resemble some of the countries they've colonized. And this is in London, which is like a world capital, the center of global finance. And... Meanwhile, you've got people Mm -hmm. shitting on the ground. If there is a better metaphor for the 21st century, I haven't heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., protesters for Extinction Rebellion expressed their disappointment with the Biden administration's tepid climate plan by dumping cow manure at the White House, an act that was definitely noticed and cared about by Biden and his senior staff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't just a huge waste of money and resources to get that shit up there. Well, Extinction Rebellion is kind of like the PETA of climate. They don't actually want to change anybody's mind. They just want to be written about in newspapers. And in fact, I think their mm-hmm. their style of protest probably turns people off and makes you think that anybody who doesn't want to die in a climate refugee camp in 2030 is some kind of lunatic. I mean, it might be right. funded by the CIA. I can't prove it, but in my heart, I know it's true. Okay. <laughs> All right, on to dutiful. Hey, you know who has dudes? I mean, real ride or die bros? Sperm whales. Naturally. Unlike the females who live their lives in matrilineal societies with their offspring and female relatives, Males leave the pods once of age and bro it up, often forming strong, long-lasting bonds and friendships of five years or more. Previously thought to live lives of solitude, sperm whales are instead pledging their lives to the fraternity of Delta Upsilon Delta Epsilon. High five. Maybe not. High fin. Righteous. Well, in Lincoln, Nebraska, hordes of dudes named Josh gathered to fight each other with pool noodles to determine whomst amongst them would win the right to be Josh. Mm-hmm. Now, the title for this year's Josh fight goes to Josh Vincent Jr., a.k.a. Little Josh, age four. Nice. I uh, I did follow the, the Josh fight uh, from its inception just about online. It's been a really fun uh, story that has developed over time. You know what else was fun is the the event was started by Josh Swain, uh, who is mm-hmm. uh, an engineering student from Arizona, and uh, there was another Josh Swain from Omaha who was there at the event, and so they flipped a coin to determine who would be the real Josh Swain, and the Josh Swain from Omaha now has to clarify when he introduces himself that he's Josh Swain, but not the real Josh Swain. <laughs> That's awesome. 
it's so much fun. I, I, I love people who are, are willing to do something silly and fun like this just because it's something to do. It's great. It's dudes rocking. It's the purest expression of dudes rocking. It's so wholesome. Yeah. As you know, every week, our investigative team uncovers a detailed and harrowing story on food crime. This week, Greg Person has the story. Well, as the famous Cure song says, I want candy. Specifically, the many regional, seasonal, and limited edition Kit Kat flavors available in Japan. I've tried about 40 of them, and of those, several were fantastic, and all of them were at least worth trying, even European cheese. So, the crime in this case is not the product itself, but the fact that I can't just go to Safeway and fill my cart with green tea and yuzu Kit Kats. Now, a lot of these, uh, I mean, I don't expect them to make every commemorative Kit Kat they've ever made, but they could do a lot more than they do. The factories keep runs of these special bars limited to make them collectible and inflate demand. And of course, you can generally only get them imported from Japan. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, Gene, I think you were there when I ordered the uh, big assortment of Kit Kats and brought them into work and everybody tried some different Kit Kats. I think you at least I tried was. the green tea ones. I did. I, I didn't care for them, but I don't care for green tea. So, Well, there you go. Now, me, I love matcha and I love these little bars. I'd eat them every day if I could. So at a minimum, Tim's, I know you're out there, my fanatical army of listeners, I am demanding that green tea Kit Kats be available in my local stores year round. And we're going to make this happen by any means necessary. Wink. Mm. Wink. There you go. That's what I need. <laughs> All right. It is time for the podcast shopping network. Quite often in this segment, I've opted to go for a lesser known product that infuriates or amuses. But today I'm going for one that is widely circulated and was from its inception. How's that precious hairline of yours? Sore subject? Sorry. Well, it needn't be a sore subject anymore because I'm going to let you in on a secret. My secret. My secret hair enhancer takes your thinning hair and volumizing it, volumizes it into a thicker, fuller head of hair. Apply it directly to areas with lost hair as a touch-up or, or as a touch-up between colorings. It comes in a convenient aerosol can with a nozzle. Make sure and prime the can before spraying and watch as your scalp gets fuller, thicker hair in a color damn near your original one. I know what you're thinking, and the answer is no. It isn't spray paint. It's my secret hair enhancer. The greatest gift to balding men since the safety razor. But does it actually work? Well, if you're into that wet look... My sources say it produces a nice, slick, shiny, gloss-like appearance that can only mean one of two things. Either your scalp has been mirror glazed, or brother, you're regrowing human hair! My secret hair enhancer also doubles as a touch-up medium for fading or weather-worn wicker furniture, and, as a bonus, is a preferred medium for street artists the world over. Ronco even had their own version of this brilliant product that in no way preyed on male insecurities or enforced an unrealistic beauty standard on men, because what's good for the goose, it's good for the dander. Oh, that's funny. I like that. Yeah. So, uh, again, this is where I'd normally explain the retail price, but I'm not shedding any more light on this fucking thing. So... But it, it looks like you've painted your head, though, right? It absolutely looks like you spray painted your head. Hmm. It is. It you get this this sh shiny dark area where this where the paint has gone. I'd like to see Bruce Willis try something like this. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot I'd like to see Bruce Willis try, but yeah, that would be pretty fun. Give me a give me a completely bald man who just flocks his fucking dome, and yeah. and I want to see what that looks like. Yeah. In fact, I tell you what, I'm gonna look up and see how much this is, and I'm going to 
shave my head and flock it with this product just because I need to know that bad what that looks like. Oh, 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 Greg, buddy, I do not recommend doing that. No, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be bad, but, you know, that thing I was saying earlier about how we live in a culture of spectacle, like, I might I might break double digits on my social media followers. Oh, but you know who has used it? Who's that? Steven Miller! Oh, of course. Yeah, I bet he looked great, because he always looks great. He doesn't look like a bargain basement lurch or anything. And actually... <laughs> oh my god, I'm looking at an image of him right now, and it's totally obvious. Okay, you want to shoot that to me in the chat? Oh... You know what? I remember this. Folks, forget the thing I said a minute ago, because this looks like shit. It's terrible. <laughs> it, it's it literally, so obvious. It does look like brown flocking. It looks like he flocked his hair with poop. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not it's good. It's bad. It's not a good look. All right. It's time for State Up. The next state in our review of the States of the Union is Georgia. Fact. Georgia is known as the Hollywood of the South, not because they film movies and TV shows there, but because actress Kim Basinger is from there. That's actually true. So, it's kind of a cool state. Yeah. Kind of a cool part of the world. Yeah. Oh, see, there you go. I was I was hoping you'd picked up what I'd put down. Yeah. Yeah, I smell what you're stepping on. <laughs> Excellent. You smell what the what the Greg is cooking? Yeah. Well, did you know Georgia is named after a guy named George, but feminine because all states are girls? <laughs> no, I did not know that. Um, if you're a police officer in Georgia, you're entitled to three things free of any charges. Sweet tea, pastries, and any crimes you happen to commit. Speaking of police officers, if you say the secret password to any officer of the court in Georgia, they immediately have to leave and bring you a slice of pie but they get to choose what kind. Hmm. The state of Georgia is actually the state of Florida hiding behind a peach tree. In Georgia, the summers are so hot and humid you can poach an egg in your pocket. Pocket poaching is a popular way to make lunch on the go. All right. Our final segment tonight, as every week, is Person to Person and Person, where we share your valuable feedback with our audience. This week we heard from a Tim who hasn't communicated with us in some time. And he writes, Dear person in person, how are you? I am fine. Where do most of your listeners come from? And don't just say the internet. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. Sincerely, Little G Person. Well, Little G, by and, by and large, most of our downloads come from Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, but we do have downloads throughout the country of the United States of America and indeed the world. A close second right now is Russia. I mentioned Maria Butina in one episode, and we are apparently blowing up over there. Who knew? Look out for polonium in your local mailbox. Do you have any topics you'd like us to cover in main news? Send them our way. We'll write a haiku about the subject and feature it prominently in our main segment as we further degrade into media whores. Folks, that's all the show we have for you tonight. We love your feedback, and there are so many ways to give it to us. Send us an email person in person show at gmail.com drop us a voicemail 541-249-5933 find us on twitter at anchor persons or check out our website person in person show.com until next time this is gene person saying you should always end a comedy set with a callback and this is greg person saying it's a boy good night
Okay, stay on the recording just for a second. So in okay. honor of uh, my little rant about Tucker Carlson, I have written a haiku that I'm going to use as the stinger for tonight's episode. And it goes like this. You're a Nazi, dude. You're a fucking Nazi. And Nazis catch these hands. That's beautiful. Yeah, I thought you'd like it. That's the best poem I've ever heard about Nazis. Yeah. <laughs>